back to your novel, Minor Indignities. Um, I'm much more confident in my ability to judge the depiction of sexuality in films on a moral level than I am in the written word. Uh, it's hard for me to be objective about it. You, now, your your novel deals with, as you mentioned, you know, the hookup culture, things like that, and there are some sexual scenes in the book. Now, uh, and I say this not as a criticism or a judgment of 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 it, but uh, you know, I was uncomfortable with some of these things, um, and not in the sense that they were a near occasion of sin or anything, but just it's it's an uncomfortable experience reading. You kind of feel like you have to only half read it and sort of skim over it. Uh, but uh, so I'm saying that not as a criticism, but just sort of I'm always curious, you know, um, how you how a writer approaches that and how a Catholic writer approaches that sort of thing like like what what goes into your thinking and sort of how uh detailed to get in those kinds of uh scenes and sort of what purpose that serves um because you know i can read walker percy but i can't ask him you know so <laughs> this is why i'm bringing this up it's you know i i wanted to ask you sort of yeah. what what goes into that decision making process yeah, I mean, I think the moviegoer is probably, I mean, is, is sort of there. There's very little in there that he would. That would That's his most tasteful. Yeah, yeah, I think so. One, yeah. yeah. Um, well, so well, there's an aesthetic uh, criterion that I think should, probably should be paramount for artists, and this is a point that O'Connor and Percy would make again and again. Right. And I think it's correct. Um, if the aesthetic constraints are actually going to be more stringent in some ways. Than anything else. Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. And and works of art really should never arouse extra aesthetic emotions. They shouldn't make you angry. They should. I mean, quite apart from the fact that they they could be a scandal to people, um, that's an aesthetic flaw. Um, they they I, yes. I, at least that would be that would be my sense. And so that, when you say uh, when you say extra aesthetic, because I think this is actually a really important point, and I don't want to just gloss over it, like. Uh, extra aesthetic emotions. You're not saying that you a, a novel, a story won't make you feel sad or something like that. But what exactly is the distinction that you're drawing there? Yeah, because you, you're going to feel emotions that in reading a work of fiction, in particular, that are identifiable emotions that we experience in in real life, and yet they are bound up with the work of art itself. So when you say extra aesthetic, you're saying something, something that yeah. sort of escapes the work of art and takes on a, it sort of takes over. Is that sort of what you're getting at? I think so. I think I think something that sort of diverts you from the attending to the work. That's right, from the work itself, and becomes a kind of um, uh, end in itself, uh, and so. Um, I mean, you could see this even, I mean, to, to use another example, I, I've been on the, on the plane and sort of seen somebody watching a cooking channel on one of those seat back uh, screens, and you see the steak sort of sizzling there and the butter. Mm -hmm. And there's a pornographic side to it. I mean, it's just too, it's, it's, it, is, it is involving you too much in the possibility of tasting the flavor and, in, and eating this thing that's being shown on the screen. It's literally trying to arouse your 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 desire for food and advertisements mm. often do this too. You see, in the most vulgar sense, this would be advertisement for fast food. You see a burger sort right. of and delicious sauce. Um, and so these are, I, this is the, the aim there is to stimulate the body and, and, right. to, um, and I think the aim in a work of art, even if, even if say you are feeling um, uh, uh, a sense of, sadness or, or even joy or some other emotion along with a character. The aim there is not primarily to arouse your emotions or to stimulate uh, a kind of Skinnerian response in you, uh, but to bring you close enough to the character that you can understand their interior life yeah. and identify with them. So um, anyway, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's interesting. I'm, I'm, it's a very interesting question it's it's a favorite theme of mine this relationship of art and emotion and i didn't think we were actually gonna gonna go there and talking about the sexual aspects of the, the the novel but um it's a great point and it's something that you know i think a lot about with regard to music i'm like very jealous about insisting that the purpose of music is not to make you feel certain emotions 
you know, and a lot of people would disagree with that. Um, and so I think the same can be true even of works of art that more directly deal with human subject matter uh, than say a piece of instrumental music does like th things that actually you're dealing with characters who are feeling emotion. So it might be, you know, emotion might be more proper to it in a sense, but still, you know, you have that, uh, I think TS, I remember reading something by TS Eliot where he talks about sort of the emotion evoked by certain uh, parts of the divine comedy um, being like a, a properly artistic emotion and that the intensity of the, artistic emotion or the aesthetic emotion doesn't depend on the intensity of the human emotion being depicted in the scene. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's probably true. I mean, on the other hand, I mean, so I'd like to go back to music too, because I think it's very interesting. I mean, I think that there, it's very clear to me in music that uh, there, there are works of music that are intended to evoke emotions and some of them do so very beautifully and intentionally and they're successful. Sure. Um, but it is also the case that, um, you can hear a single plaintive note played on a violin and be filled with a kind of nostalgia and a deep emotion, uh, mm -hmm. but actually nothing has happened artistically and there's no beautiful structure there. So I think, I think, you know, I would tend to agree with you that the, certainly the purpose of music cannot be to arouse emotion. And there are other works of, uh, perhaps even the greatest works of music, um, uh, that, that probably, Arouse very little uh, sort of throbbing emotion of the kind that yeah. we associate with romanticism, uh, and and they're you know they're perfectly valid <laughs> uh, right. works, of, works of art. But in literature, I agree with you. I mean, Aristotle, after all, is going to is going to associate a tragedy. Uh, I mean, he says the whole aim of tragedy, in a sense, is to arouse emotion and then to purge mm -hmm. it. And right. that and uh, the novel is uh, is is a, is a genre unto itself. But there is a kind of there is a kind of catharsis that happens in many novels too. And in fact, when I was thinking about the structure of this novel, and, and these are really the questions that interest me the most, I was thinking of, I mean, it, it, Aristotle has so many deep lessons about, about structuring narrative, but you have to kind of increase intensity and, and, uh, and raise the pitch of the emotions to a certain point, to a kind of climax, and then let things fall off again. And then you sort of start to climb that, that mountain mm -hmm. again. And the, the Minor Dignities is very much based on sort of a three uh, movements like that, uh, the last one being the most, um, the most intense and the one that takes the longest to build up. Uh, so, um, well, that seems to entirely contradict what I was saying earlier, and maybe it does. But just to, get, to go back to the question of representing um, sexuality in a work of literature, I agree it's very difficult. And I showed this manuscript to a priest uh, at, at one point, and he actually suggested that I take out some things that I had in the in the novel, and I did. Uh, and I did that uh, in part because um, I think he was right, and, and that, that they were unnecessary, uh, and and probably maybe maybe morally uh, they didn't belong there. But I think aesthetically they didn't belong there too. If they, if somebody can make a, a a very strong case that that um, a scene could cause scandal. I think that's a sign that there's an artistic problem too, because I don't think mm -hmm. that it's ever necessary for a work of art to cause scandal uh, in anybody. Now, it could happen inadvertently, and this is something that Flannery O'Connor talks about in her essays, and uh, uh, the, I think the answer that's often given to this, and maybe she even gives it, is, is an answer that Moriak gave, which is you have to purify the source. I think that's true, uh, but uh, I would also say that uh, uh, on the other side of things, I did leave in some scenes that you said that maybe they did make you a little bit uncomfortable, and I certainly hope that they that they that they were not an occasion of sin for anybody. I don't think they would be. I don't think that these scenes are like that. And there's a way of writing about well, not a near occasion of sin. Yeah, there's a way of writing about relations like this too. That 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 I mean, the artist's intention is important because if your intention sexuality is a is a is a it's a mirror of human relations, and there, there's, some, there, there's a, you know, it's, it is, it's a, it's a domain of human existence, but it, it must be approached very delicately. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna represent a conversion, realistically, um, you, you do need, you cannot, uh, you can't skim over parts of reality there that are essential to the protagonist's uh, life. 
as well. And so I felt that it was necessary to go into this aspect of college life, which after all is, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very vexing and very difficult aspect of college life that, that right. we all talked about, the hookup culture. It's a problem. It's a, yeah. 